Good morning, wrestling fans. Welcome to PWR Today. Hey, Wednesday morning. It's September 8th, 2021. The man that called me dead and uh, the returning, the lovely, the Linda K. Good morning, Linda. Good morning, Meathead. Um, I'm still riding high from a kick-ass Fozzie show here in the Milwaukee area. Nice. Now, we all know that Chris is obviously singing Judas out there, but give me some of the other radio hits that he popped off. Well, the current single, Sane, which I heard a lot on Octane. I haven't heard it so much on our local rock stations. We don't have as many active rock stations in the Milwaukee Yeah, definitely on Octane. I've heard it there. Yeah, and uh, Burn Me Out, Painless, um, Sandpaper, a hit from many years ago with M. Shadows and Revenge Sevenfold. Yep. And yeah, I can go on and on, but I will say the best part of this meetup. So I, I saw Fozzie earlier this summer at, uh, at Rockfest up in Cadet, Wisconsin as well. He was on the main stage or the band, excuse me. And it was cool, but they had an earlier slot with, you know, fans that may not know as many Fozzie songs. Sure. But when you bring Fozzie into a small, intimate venue filled with not just rock, but wrestling fans, of course, and everyone around you is singing every song. Yeah. Was rocking it out. And of course, the energy from... Jericho himself, like it, it was such a good time. It was so nowhere much fun. to run, by the way. Um, that came out oh, after ooh, Judas love... was mm-hmm. one of my favorites. Yes, nowhere to run definitely was played as well, and of course, you know everybody singing Judas. That was oh. just fun too. So, anyways, it was a great time. Thank you uh, for you know carrying out the show last night. Thank you, Matthew, for filling in. I am back and here to talk about NXT this morning. Yep. Hey, let's uh, do a little segue off of NXT. Before we talk about NXT, Kevin Owens had uh, fueled some AEW rumors and speculation when he put out a um, a tweet that literally had these numbers, 43.8791, 103.4591. Before we talked about it uh, off air, would you have had any idea what that stuff is, Linda? Sounds like a lot of different radio stations. Yeah. Welcome to 43.8791, the Rock and PWR. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> <laughs> no, those are coordinates. Those are planetary coordinates. And they're the coordinates of Mount Rushmore. So uh, there was a stable group faction family in ROH with Kevin Owens and the Young Bucks that was called Mount Rushmore. Is Kevin Owens saying, boy, he's jealous of how everything looks so awesome with Adam Cole Bay Bay showing up on Sunday? Or is he saying that he's going to meet them there once his contract's done? Speculation, Go say that's a hint but he's still in contract i don't know if he can quite hint that much um uh so i am gonna go with him just showing praise not jealousy but praise to his former mount rushmore uh teammates yeah i'd say love praise those are uh, uh, definitely love for his boys yeah, but playing along, um, if you will, with obviously pro wrestling world being hot right now. Instead of tweeting out an old photo, why not put some coordinates? Let, let's put a little play. Make people think, like, what is that? Let them figure it out. Just get more buzz Yeah, regarding him and, you know, his yep. former so, mates. So, again, right after All Out, AEW had that press conference. And they talked to Adam Cole as well. And uh, Adam Cole threw a little bit out there that just makes us love Adam Cole even more now. And Britt Baker. Adam Cole's mom was at the show only because Britt made sure to get her to the program. How awesome is that? That Britt's doing all the work. Even though she's got a title defense that night, Britt is the one making sure that mom gets to the show. That is tremendous. I mean, again, just seeing her utilizing his move and her match. We said the signs were there. I didn't even think about Adam Cole being out later in the evening, but that is awesome. I'm happy for both of them. And yeah, she, you know, she's, she's doing it all, even the planning. But oh, I will say as a woman, sometimes we do a lot of the planning, not saying men can't, but <laughs> I see her um, following through, if you will, to make sure his mom could be there on, uh, to see the, his special moment. Nice. All right. Let's talk a little NXT from last night. Okay. Uh, yeah. We've got uh, really technically, Linda, this is the last of an era. Next week on NXT, we will have the marriage of Index. We will have the new multicolored NXT logo starting. And music. And music. music. Everything next week. So is this the last night of an era? 
The show starts off with Ember Moon taking out her frustrations on NXT newcomer Kaylee Ray with the win over Ember Moon. Yeah, I I do want to see uh, rejuvenated, revitalized Ember Moon. I love how later in the episode she got to let out her frustrations about how the last few months have been for her, and that we're gonna. I mean, honestly, your partner bailed on her too. Yeah, she lost her partner, lost the tag titles, and moved in on a losing streak. Um, you know, with her going back to NXT to get that, you know, revitalization. I'm going to use that word that I'm not sure is a word again. Um, <laughs> and, you know, for the, and it did. It worked. She became a tag team champion. Yeah, she but, was TCB. Mm-hmm. But since that's no longer happening, I would, wouldn't mind seeing another reboot of Ember Moon. I, I love her. I mean, she's very talented. I wish she got a she's a ball of energy is what she, she was is. On Raw. Yeah, I, I liked, you know, let's bring back more of the werewolf gimmick. Yeah. I like that. Bring back the red eyes and just yeah. more of that look. And, and I don't know, that's what I, I would like to see. Unless she seems a little lost. Her. Yeah. Yes. So unless lost. they're going to completely repackage her, um, I wouldn't mind her going back to what we mainly knew her from, from her early NXT days. Sure. Now, going from somebody that seems lost to two people that found each other. See what I did there. Mm -hmm. Uh, We get a sneak peek of what's going on in Indy Hartwell's uh, bachelorette party. You've been to bachelorette parties. I've heard of bachelorette parties. I've been to (laughs) bachelorette parties, but uh, is this a normal bachelorette party? I mean, maybe the start of one when you (laughs) meet up to eat together, but I know not quite. No, not a a lot of cattiness, Adam. I think that part was probably uh, indulged. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and I would hope not the cattiness of most bachelorette parties, but it looks like um they they didn't quite have uh, the amount of cocktails in yet because I feel it would have been much more rowdy. Well, it was pretty bright in there, so it had to be daytime. But you know, hey, you can do brunch. Why not do your bachelorette okay. party during the day and get things started? You know what I'm saying? Gotcha, Carmelo Hayes and Santos Escobar. Santos Escobar with the win uh, due to we'll call an interference, right? Because yeah. uh, Lopez attacked Hayes outside. She looks like she's going to be a force to reckon with. Yeah, it is great evening out the odds and numbers uh, with what's going on between Legado Del Fantasma and Hit Row. So, yeah, I, I like it. I like it. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Again, we're going to have a tag team title match. Uh, Kanta Zero and Caden Carter. By the way, I love Caden Carter. I mean, she just, that's, uh, she's fantastic. I'd like to see her more. Um, the Pediatric Cancer Awareness Month is going on, obviously, in September. Connor's Cure, Connor to Crusher, all that stuff is happening as well. Now, the Creed Brothers, a brand new addition mm. to the Diamond Mind. Uh, these hosses look like they're the real deal as well. Brutus and Julius? Yes. <laughs> Brutus and, just, and Julius. I just kept hearing them saying the Creed Brothers, and I was like, I said out loud, I'm like, oh, I wonder if they're really brothers. But then when I heard the names were Brutus and Julius, I said, maybe not. But I like it. Those names are very fitting for them. Um, obviously, talented shoot wrestlers, and man, what a strong debut on NXT and a great addition to Diamond Mine. Diamond Mine's becoming a thing. We thought it was just going to be to kind of build up Roddy Strong, but uh, Diamond Mine's becoming a thing. Yeah, Let's- it looks... I would say it looks like they're just continuing to bring on some more uh, shoot wrestlers, grapplers, if you will. Um, that's what it seems like. I, I mean, just based off the Creed brothers and um, I don't, the other gentleman, I don't know his name, sorry, but um, looks like he's done some. You're talking grappling. about Malcolm Bivens? Not Malcolm um, and not Roddy. I forgot. Sorry. Well, he's got the cauliflower ear. So it looks like I, I'm going to assume he's done some. Uh, He's done some fighting. Wrestling, yeah. yes. Our ear. He didn't get that working at McDonald's. Yeah, or maybe. Nowadays. Well, it depends on the McDonald's you work at. Maybe the 24-hour at a truck stop. But anyways. Mm, okay. <laughs> Hit row, obviously, with words for Legato Del Fantasma. B-Fab words for Electra Lopez. Uh, the NXT Women's Tag Team Titles match. Uh, Casey Cantanzaro, Cantanzaro, and Caden Carter taking on Io Shirai and Zoe Stark. Still some uh, confusion between uh, Shirai and Stark. But the winners of the match and still champions, Shirai and Stark. Yeah. Um, I guess I kind of at first, you know, made me think about Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. Like, okay, 
you know, they, they don't really like each other, but right. they're going to work well together in the ring. So and it's not Zoe Stark's fault. Uh, right. fault. She it's wants to like you. Yeah. But so I guess that's what's setting it apart a little bit. But I want to see something different. Maybe they eventually do like each other, become much more of a dominating tag team in NXT versus going the Shayna and Nia path where they've just hated each other from the start. Or yeah. like for that one time where you mentioned she was playing with her hair. Here's what I actually was excited to see tonight. I didn't know, or excuse me, last night. I didn't know we were getting it, but it's Dexter Loomis's bachelor party. All right, <laughs> so we got Loomis, Johnny Gargano, Drake Maverick, Odyssey Jones, and a zombie referee. Okay, with the zombie referee. Uh, but joining him a little bit later, who's paying for all this? To the moon! How can you not have a bachelor party without Cameron Grimes? Yes, that was tremendous. I, I, I wasn't sure if we were going to get the bachelor party as well last night, but once they showed that three shot all them walking outside, I was like, oh, this looks like it can be really good. And yeah. having Cameron Grimes there to pretty much lead the way, no pun intended, um, I thought that was great. So, uh, Winner yeah. at the go-kart track gets $10,000. <laughs> <laughs> But how fun. I was thinking how fun it must have been for them to just film that. Get... I expected more out of uh, Odyssey Jones when he said, hey, man, you know, this is a trampoline park. You see Drake <laughs> Maverick over there? And by the way, did you catch that? Look at that little rock star. Aha. Yes, Aha. I, I see that. what you did there. Uh, can you send him to the moon? I thought he was going to jump and just catapult uh, Drake into a wall or something. I thought that too, but um, it, it still worked. It was just funny seeing Odyssey leaping the way he did and how excited he was as well. Um, I think but, yeah. the main event of the whole thing, though, was, all right, boys, this is Axe Throwing. Any of you gentlemen have ever had experience with an axe? <laughs> 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 I knew they would pay it over to Dexter and him just raising his hand. That was fantastic. Just like how he was spot on with the axe throwing as well. Yeah. And then it then led to him helping Johnny Gargano. And then oh, they Gargano. had a moment. They had a few moments. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, the laser tag, too. Okay. How funny was that as well with the, the chlorophyll? With uh, Dexter actually <laughs> the... putting out everybody and then Johnny coming over and hitting him with the laser tag. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the hand connecting. Oh, oh, oh that's the way. Yep. Again, this probably... As much as I don't want this stuff on a regular basis, <clears throat> this was probably one of the better ones I've had in a long time. I was thoroughly entertained. Right. Well, it just, you know, it, it kind of made me think, like, all right, every WWE wedding does not turn out well. Can it you name like one wrestling wedding that turned out perfectly? No. I can. <laughs> that I've been out. thinking oh, about Elizabeth, this. Oh, Macho Man and Miss Elizabeth? No, 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 no. Because wasn't there still something with that one anyway? Uh, perhaps. Just, it's a friend of the show. Uh, she's one dirty bitch. Oh. She married Eric Young. Yeah, EY. There was no shenanigans at the end. Uh, they literally were married. Family. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Well, um, as hinted at Indy's bachelorette party, every one of these wrestling weddings or not, did well, so I'm I'm just thinking that I I, I think that Gargano and um Ray are, yeah, yeah they're they're gonna this is where they turn on Indy because you think that they're bringing Dexter into the way, but I don't right. know. It's just my my early assumption, my early assumption. But I I loved the the, the vignettes last night. Though that, those were hey, great. let's talk about uh, Mi Ying and Virginia Ferry. You told me a little story before we went on the air. Yes. So well, it was May Ying's in ring debut last night against a uh, talented Virginia Ferry. Saw her face. So I'm like, wait a minute. Hold up. Wait a minute. That's Dream Girl Ellie from OVW. There you go. Yeah. It's my friend Ellie. I saw that. I was like, oh, that is tremendous to see her on NXT. I had to message her right away just how happy I was to see her there. But yeah, that just, it's great seeing. OVW talents, you know, getting their shot, their, their literal shots, if you will, on other promotions. Obviously, Cal Hero getting his 
TV time on AW Dark and on Impact Wrestling. We've had some other OVW wrestlers on Impact, Tony Gunn yep. as well. Um, just, you know, there's there's been uh, been a few of them. But right. seeing So just happy to see the, the up-and-comers getting their shots. And on NXT, I, I will say since my time with OVW, I don't believe any of our uh, roster has been on NXT. So that That's is fantastic. tremendous to see. Yes, so, yes. Fantastic. L.A. Knight driving around in his convertible. Uh, they're talking about the uh, four-way match that's going to determine the number one contender. Um, L.A. Knight uh, looking like a million bucks, pun intended there, uh, as he's <laughs> driving around talking about, hey, don't start crying, don't start whining as I slap around your three NXT fan favorites as I become the number one contender. Good stuff from L.A. Knight. Mm-hmm. Yep, can definitely pull off that whole uh, superstar. The only the drawback on L.A. L.A. Knight, and uh, I can hear it. I don't know if... Uh, if I put this in your ear, you'll ever forget it. But when you listen to uh, L.A. Knight talk, what is his cadence? Who does he sound like? Cadence. Uh, his cadence, his way of speaking, uh, his uh, his mannerisms. Who does he remind you of? A future WWE Hall of Famer. Do you feel electrified? Do you feel like he's the most entertaining man in sports entertainment? Oh, Dwayne. Does he sound like a Caucasian rock? Now I got to close my eyes and picture this here. One moment. Because whose game? L.A. Knight's game. Yeah. Talk to me. Yeah. There you go. I can see that. Like I said, you won't underhear it now. Then the next time you hear him talk, you'll be like, I get it. Yep. So that's the only real knock on L.A. Knight. I still love L.A. Knight. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Mm-hmm. He's just made like a- his theme music as well. Oh, his theme music is god awful. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. NXT Tag Team Championships main event, Oni Lorcan and Danny Burch taking on MSK, the champions. Really, MSK wins. They retain the phrase that the commentary team keeps using. We need to put a little bit of respect on these men's names. Now you need to put a little bit of respect on their title reign. But nobody was going to give any respect to uh, Lorcan and Burch because Pete Dunne and uh, Ridge Holland broke up the band. They attacked him after the match because they didn't win. Well, I mean, I feel that Pete Dunne not being in the fi- the fatal four way match for the for the NXT Championship. I feel this is another way to kind of get him uh, more in the limelight, putting yeah. him into a new tag team just with Ridge Holland. Um, I think this. I think this can work. I like. I Pete thought it was Dunn. good business. Yeah, I like Pete Dunn. I, I mean, he looks great since returning, and I, you know, I, I do want to see more. He's got that edge, and I feel like he can definitely get back into the you know heavyweight title reign. But in the meantime, putting him in another tag team, him and Rich Holland, you got a lot of technical background. You got a lot of strength and size in the other. Yeah. I, I think that it could work out really well. All right, that was NXT from last night. Hey, tonight we are going to get all the, um, really the fallout from All Out. The numbers are not in yet on that pay-per-view, but I got to tell you, Linda, um, that had to be their best grossing pay-per-view of all time. Probably the best show I've ever seen out of AEW in their brief. uh, They've been around longer than two years, right? But I call it as in their TV time. So when they debuted on TNT, that's the history I'm talking about. And uh, unbelievable. That show was five hours long. And it didn't feel like five hours. You've been to WrestleManias. I've been to WrestleManias. WrestleManias have been shorter and felt longer. Right. Yeah, no, it was tremendous. I mean, just the weeks leading up, I, I feel grateful that you and I got to be a part of the road to all out just recently you know like i said to matthew yesterday morning what did chicago do to get all that (laughs) (laughs) that hot crowd i don't know jasmine but yeah i did hear you guys discussing the other huge moments um in wrestling history that took place in chicago and i was like man that is true yeah i'm true but yeah no still so exciting this time in pro wrestling and you know again just you know seeing fozzy Right the night after, you know, Chris Jericho still getting to be an AEW superstar and winning his match against MJF. It's just so surreal seeing like, oh, yeah, he just had that match last night. But now we're seeing 
and you know, as the rock star he is, it's been a tremendous couple of weeks in wrestling, let me tell you. Yep. Unbelievable stuff. So, well, that is a crisp and clean 20 minutes. How about that? Oh, but I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about our sponsor. Oh, my gosh. We jumped right into it that I had to think, like, I don't believe I spelled out my name yet tonight. <laughs> Do you go the day to day going, have I spelled my name today? Yeah. Go ahead, Linda. Collar and elbow. They are tremendous. We love them. They love us. Make sure to go to collarandelbowbrand.com. Check out the latest and greatest in wrestling, street fashions, and use promo code Linda K. That's L I N D A K A Y to save yourself 10% off your order. Well, it definitely helps when we move the sponsor segment around. So today was at the end of the show. All right. So for Linda K., the man they call me today, hey, thanks for stopping by. We will talk to you tomorrow morning. So long, everyone. <laughs>